What's up everybody, Matt here. So today I wanna to go over how you can make use of a, an auto table that's available that uh, I use for every, every table that I add to every app that I ever make. I use this, it's like a template, it's a starting template that includes uh, some columns at the beginning that are some header type things that make that, that uh, appear at the, the start of a form. Uh, and it also includes seven individual uh, data points for any kind of audit keeping that you may need, uh, as well as three other very helpful columns that, that when you're trying to automate and create some smooth interactions and some background things, uh, they come in a lot of handy. So stick with me and I'll show you how. Okay, so if you are a Patreon subscriber, you have, uh, you've been given access to this folder right here, Patreon's folders, and you'll see there's a few things in here. One of them is this auto tables. So inside here, there's several that are already uh, inside here, but one of them is the standard sheet setup. This is the one I'm gonna talk about today. And so as you can see, there's a little group of columns here at the beginning. Uh, there's an ID, there's a blue group and a green group. So uh, the gray group here at the front, they're a standard group of columns that I found that are very helpful for uh, individualizing, <clears throat> excuse me, pages. Uh, and so you can see I have an individual page, so it's an actual page. Uh, we have a column that represents the container of the page. This is helpful because if you want to turn on tabs, um, you need to be able to have an actual um, column that that system can recognize as the page where you can enter the content. And the content for the page is what populates that tab up there. So having uh, an actual column to represent the page, even though it's you know, only, maybe it's only one page, it's still helpful. Um, I have a banner, this is just an image. It's like a really thin little bar that'll appear at the very top of your form. I find it's helpful to have um, things like this um, on your, app small little things uh, little visual elements like this really kind of help smooth out the flow and make it look like a polished um, product if you will and then I have a header and an info text and so these are all of these are show column types so this is obviously a page this is an image that's just pulling a header bar uh, this is a section header and this is text and so inside the notes upside inside here, if you come into this little code section here, um, all you gotta do is hover above these. Uh, you can see there's this enter content here space. And so that's, uh, you, if you look, you can see it's uh, encapsulated by double quotes. So this is a space where you can enter text uh, before you even load this into your app that will automatically uh, set the section header and then the info text is the same way so i find it helpful to do things like if i want to create you know a user table okay so then for the section header i'll come in here and i'll say user setup because this is the uh this is the header that will be seen at the beginning of the form for the user table right and so i like to use that first little bit of space with these columns to tell the person what this form is for or a space to provide information that would be helpful whenever they're filling things out. Um, so, you know, like uh, the, so for instance, instead of putting in the info space, I usually put something that'll be like, use this form to enter basic details about a user. It's literally like stupid little system text, things like that, that as app, Builders, we're not really thinking about including these because we're just thinking, I, I just need a username, user email, maybe a, a, a photo and like ID. That's it. That's all I need. You can add on later. Man, yeah, you know, but if you add some of these visual elements to your app, it really adds a polish to it and it, it really kind of sets, it's a different bar. It really is. So to show you what these first few little columns look like when they're added into your app. Let me show you what they look like here. So it's inside the form is where they appear because they're show columns. And you see you have a header bar with this little image here. And this is the image that's pulled. 
Uh, it's small, it's narrow, it's kind, of, it's simple with the little fancy little thing in the middle. You can hide it if you want. You can change it to a different one. There's tons of these that are available. Um, and then you have a header, and then you have a space for some text, a thing. So that's that first section up here. So then there's this empty space that, of course, you know you can just add more columns, however you need, for you to input your columns for whatever it is that you're building. Um, and then the yellow column, I do this for my personal reference, uh, is the ID column. So it automatically configures that column as the ID. So you can just rename this to whatever you want it to be, blah, blah, blah. You know, if user ID, boom. You've auto so when you add this table, that column automatically sets itself to the ID. Now I color code it yellow because there's how many times are you coming back where you need to find what is the key for this table you when you're doing a filter formula select formulas all kinds of there's all kinds of scenarios where you need to know where you need to be able to find the key column for a table like that by marking that column yellow you can come back here and visually bam there it is it's that one and copy the copy the column name just something that i've done to speed up the process of getting that information because it's something that you need all the time. What's the key for this table? What's the key for this table? So that's what that is. Now the blue section here, this is uh, what I like to call metadata. Uh, these are seven individual data points that uh, provide a almost, almost all the data that you need for an audit trail of the record. Let me show you. So you have the creation date time. So that's the date time when the record was created. The way that works is the default value is set to now. In other words, the initial value captures the date time and that's it. So when it's created, you get the date time. The creation user, this pulls the user email of whoever created it using initial value. Creation location does the same thing, grabs the lat long from wherever it was created. And so the, all, these three points here, should provide you with enough information to know who made it, where they made it, and when, right? So then I also have an edit count. So this is a change column that every time uh, somebody uh, makes a save to the form and they edit something, plus one to this. So this gives you an idea how much the record has changed because we're not keeping a complete audit trail here. We're just keeping some of it. Um, and then to finish it off, we have uh, companions to these first group up here, uh, but these are the edit ones. So we have the edit date time, the edit user, and the edit location. So every time somebody comes in and they make that modification, not only do we get a count, oh, so when you first create it, one. And then somebody comes in and they change something, two. When they change it, these edit ones update. The location updates, the user updates, uh, which is the email of the person that made the modification. Of course, you can change that to whatever you want it to be. You could actually have that be the user ID. Um, if you want it to be the like the device ID, you know, there's all, whatever whatever it is you want to do. I just defaulted to the email because that's just what typically everybody uses. So whenever they make a modification to it, we grab all of that newer information. Now, like I said, this isn't a complete audit trail. Uh, we only have the first and the last. So, you know, however many edits happen in the middle, that's why I included the edit count so that you can come in here and you can see, okay, so John created this record whenever there's been 46 edits made to this record and so-and-so was the last person to make the edit. Okay, so then you can go back there, you know, the high edit count gives you, you know, you can use that as an indication of, somebody's been in here a whole bunch of times modifying this you know depending on what it is you know whatever anyways so basic metadata finishing it off here this green section uh these are three columns that help immensely with automating and doing a whole bunch of background type of things and just smoothing out some flows um, that you know you eventually ultimately I always find I need one of these if not a couple um, so first off we have the update column <clears throat> so this gives you the ability to this is a it's a quick little hack to get 
um, the formulas, if you have like app formulas inside your sheet to get all of those to update again. So like if you come, if you know that, um, you know, some data has changed in the back end, but some of the data that's formulaically der derived hasn't updated, this gives you a way to where you can refresh the app and you can build a quick update system uh, into it to where you can just push a button and it forces all of those to recalculate. Uh, the way that this works is uh, it's a combination of a column and you have to have an action or you can include this into a group of actions. So here's my action and what it does, if I just go to actions and I'll show you update, um, here we go, update element. All it does is it says whatever the update column's value is plus one. And so if I show you the update column inside here, its type is number. And so the, it's, it's, it's a clever little thing that we came up with years ago to where you have a number and then so this number column you take whatever number is there and you plus one to it so it starts off nothing plus one now it's one but what it does is any any time that you make modifications to a record right any time that you save the form all of the for all of the formulas reevaluate and so this is a way to get a quick edit into the table that forces that's a 100% edit because we're changing a number. So we know that something actually changed. It's not just like we're, th we're enacting an action that has formulas and if the formulas would change, they would go off. No, this 100%, we can see it in the back end. The number went up by one. So we know it updated, right? Um, so I'm all about this. Things need to be clear. And so this gives you the ability to where you just come in here and you create this action where you set the update to update plus one um, and you can make it visible. And so then whenever you come in here, if I just push it, boom, you can see the plus one happened. Nothing happened because there's nothing to update. Um, but what it does is inside your table, it takes whatever was there and it pluses one to it, which then causes these edit ones to re-update, right? The edit count updates. And any formulas that you have inside your for your columns, they all update. And so then you can include that for you know that update as a passive thing. So it's like when you create something that's on a page, or you create something that's on, in a group. You know, if I do something down here, I can use that up that quick update that I made to update the parent. See what I'm saying? Or I can make like here I have update children if I press this yep update the children eight updates that's because there's eight children so what it did is it enacted that update action on the child table and it's just the grouped action and it says okay for all of those and see I can do here we go ref update children related page elements that's the the virtual list of all of the children records and then I have another update for the child table. So that's how that works. That's the update column. Makes it super easy to update things, especially if you wanna like do the whole thing where it's like if I submit a, submit a record on this table, I want that table to reevaluate itself. This update column makes that happen. Okay, next we have workflow trigger. Okay, so I have a sales, uh, I have a, a sales table or an order table, right? And then when at some point when they finish it, we need to shoot off some workflows. Okay, so we could build in some some complicated um, things using the this row before this row after, but in my time I found that those types of uh, calculations, if they include any kind of complexity they really slow down the save. They really slow down the whole, um, when, when that workflow is enacted, it, it's, it just kinda, there's just a little more that has to happen for the system to do that. And so instead of doing that, where it evaluates, oh, what was this before, what was this after, should we run, we should, okay. Instead of doing it like that, you can just do something where it's hard coded. I have a thing where it's like, 
it's a stack for the save of a particular form. And so on that form, I have it do this action. And inside that, I'll have it to where it'll be like workflow trigger. And so then it runs and actions run really fast. Um, and then it puts uh, a value inside the workflow trigger column. And I have my workflows watching the workflow trigger column for certain things. I get workflow trigger add access. And so this workflow is watching the workflow trigger column for the value of add access. And I have that add access value put into the workflow trigger column either on an action or I have it like an initial value inside my form. So like when the first time the form opens, it has the workflow trigger thing uh, inside the workflow trigger so that will actually cause the workflow to go off so like the first time it runs it does it so then what I'll do is inside the workflow the first thing I'll have it do is clear the trigger right and so I have an action on the table that just clears that value out of the workflow trigger column so then that's how the whole thing works so you know at some point however this value gets put inside to the workflow trigger and that's what triggers this specific workflow. That's how I can 100% control when, an, when a workflow fires off. Another thing that we kind of picked up a long time ago. And so this is just a text field, it's hidden. All of these fields are, are hidden except for like these front ones, but those are show columns, so they're kind of hidden. Um, but um, yeah, all of these back here, they're all hidden. They all so and everything automatically sets itself up. That's the whole point of this. Um, so that's the workflow trigger. And the last one is the form type. Form type is something that I've kind of used as it's kind of a catch-all. Um, so the original idea was um, sometimes when I come into a form, I want to show some data. So like, with an order when we first start the order right maybe i don't want to see some stuff inside the form but after a form after the order is closed i can do i want to show some other stuff more specifically this was like when i'm inside the form for closing the the order right um you know you can formulaically derive this Sometimes it's easier to just literally flag something. And so then I'll have it to where if there's a button that says, you know, like finalize or whatever, I can have it set the form type to finalize and then open that record that I just modified. And now I'm in a different set. And now, so then I can build things inside the form that are all looking at that form type column saying, if this has a special whatever, do this act this way otherwise do that you know what I mean um, also uh, so that's that's how it originated was I was coming into a form and I needed to be able to like see the form a different way and have different functionality and I wanted it to be a super easy way to where there wasn't a whole lot of calculations that were going on um, so then what I'll do is I'll have a it, when I do something to where I'll set the form type I have actions that clear the form type afterwards so it's like on that example where we needed the form to be one thing one time um, in the save event right I have a stack that fires off kind of like I was saying before that um, lit that the first thing it does is clear the form type that way when you come back to the record it's looked at from the normal context not from this context of the special thing that I, I flagged it for also if you need to, um, like I'm finding, so like when you get to like really advanced automations to where you have like parent-child type things going on, uh, sometimes you need during an automated process, you need to flag something so that you can exclude it or include it or whatever. And so form type is just kind of like a catch-all flag type of column. Um, I could probably call it something else that, like I said, form type was just the, the, it originated because I needed a way to change the type of form that I was looking at. <clears throat> but it's evolved and I just kind of use it for 
all kind. It's like a flag, um, a special flag type of thing, and it's just a text column that's hidden. And so you just use another, um, you just use an action to set some value in there, and then you have you know workflows or show if values or other actions or whatever watching that form type column and you know if it has whatever value then it does whatever it's supposed to do uh, so this is a standard set of columns that I include in every table like when I'm I so uh, when I'm starting an app uh, whenever I want to include a table the first thing I do is I come back here and I copy this header row and I put it in my new table so I'm going to show you that right now. So all you got to do is come up here and copy the first row, right? So you can just do this, copy, <clears throat> and then like say I want to add a uh, um, I want to add a table to my to this app, right? So I view the source, and then inside of here I'll create a new table and I'll paste those columns in here. Now some things that I like to do, I was uh, freeze the first uh, row I can do I can do it a little fast freeze the first row and then I also come in here and I make this bold that way all of these empty ones become bold um, and then you the, then it's just a matter of you know if you want to keep that yellow ID thing going if you want to keep this going whatever but as long as you've got this in here and then you can enter in your um, column name. So like if I want to add, you know, like a, a really simple notes, right? To where I can have like a note name, note details, note, uh, you know, photo, and this will be note ID. And then I can get rid of that. Now, wait for it to save, and then I can come back to my app, and I'll just refresh this, that way I get the new list of tables so now if I come in here and I say let's go give me a new one I need to add notes so now since um, yeah here we go now since uh, everything is automatically uh, has all of these note parameters inside them all of these things are going to automatically set themselves so like all of this stuff, all of these metadata columns that you would normally have to go through and set this as a, at a date, time, and hide it. This is a, and hide it, and this, blah, blah. you don't have to do any of that. And if, if I would have remembered to come in here and change what these said inside the, the note parameters, where it says enter content here, um, uh, then it would have automatically set that too. But, so now if I come back and I go and we look at this notes table, you can see all of these are all automatically configured to, to the show. Um, the note ID is set to the text, to, to the ID, right, with unique ID. Uh, all of these automatically have their, their set. All of these have their thing. They're all automatically hidden. Text, text, number. So it's all automatically done for me. I don't even have to worry about all of that stuff. It's done for me. Just done. All I need to do is come in here and enter my enter these that I want maybe come in here sometimes I'll get rid of the location one because I don't want to use I don't need to capture that info but you know enter your column names add your add your uh, your your table and then you're good to go come in here and you can you see how the section header right has this enter content here because I didn't change it change that uh, and then you're you're good. You're ready to go. Super fast. Makes I do this uh, this standard table here, the standard sheet setup. I do this every table. This is how I start. I come in here. I come in here. Copy it. Paste. Okay, then we're moving forward because it's going to give me all of these metadata's that I'm going to need for whatever. It gives me this nice form startup that I like. It gives me my key automatically configured. Uh, and I have these extra little things that I know I'm going to use or want to use at some point. They're all automatically there. Okay, so that is the standard sheet setup. It's inside the auto tables sheet, inside the Patreon supporter folder. If you're a Patreon supporter of mine, you have access to this. If you're not a supporter of mine, you can gain access by becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon.com slash multitech. 
It's 10 bucks a month. You get access to some of these tools like this. And every once in a while I upload videos. I try and do it, but it's, you know, you know how it goes. And that's it. So I hope it helps. See you in the community.